it's kind of interesting, you know, okay, and, and this part is kind of a continuation uh, where he says, yes, I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me is thrown away like a useless branch and withers. Such branches are gathered into a pile to be burned. But if you remain in me and my words remain in you, you may ask for anything you want and it will be granted. When you produce much fruit, you are my true disciples. This brings great glory to my Father in heaven. So, um, it's kind of interesting, you know, how he, he, he talks about remaining in me and everything. And if you do that, if you ask for anything, I'll give it to you. So does that mean we can ask for a new car or uh, what, what are the conditions or stipulations on that promise, Gary? Yeah, that's, that's a conditional one. And, and see, this is, you know, where a lot of folks sometimes get into trouble with this. And, you know, first of all, just to understand scripture, you have to look at the whole context. So what really Jesus is saying, first of all, it's conditional. You have to remain, you know, again, connected to the vine. So if that means if we're remaining connected to the vine, that means where our motives are honorable. In other words, we recognize we need the Lord, we need his love. And then the other part of that is, yeah, see, what, what when we're connected to the vine, we're, we're only praying for things that give glory and honor and, and, and glorify God and are part of his will. So the thing about it is, is that that's right. The Lord answers all our prayers, just not always in the way we would like. And so what Jesus is saying is that when you're aligned with my will, first of all, your heart's going to be changed. You're not going to be praying for like a new car just to sort of you know, satisfy your own ego or lust. And again, if, if you need that car for ministry, that's a different story, right? See, the thing about it is what Jesus is saying, when we have a transformed heart, whatever we pray for is done to do you know, one of two things, to glorify God or to produce and to be used as a means, you know, for blessing others, right? So it's it's still the great commandment, which says vertical and then horizontal. So that means all of our prayers are designed to, to bless or to fulfill one of those two areas. And so that's, but that's, you, you have to be, re, re, you know, re, recognize that that's the, the foundation. Heart surrendered to the Lord. So you're you're really just giving birth to what God wants to do in you anyways. You're only asking for things that God has implanted in you that you then speak out, just like God. You speak things into existence. So just like God spoke the universe in existence, he wants us to speak things into existence that are consistent with the will and, and the dreams and the visions and the calling that he implanted in Andy, myself, and every other believer here who's watching. Amen. Amen. You know, as you were talking, it, it reminded me of a couple um, other scriptures that kind of tie in with that. Um, uh, you know, where where the the promise is there, but there is a condition, and it's right. it's based on your heart and your motives. Um, the first one, um, I think I'm going to get the reference wrong, but I want to say it's like Psalm thirty. Seven, verse four and it's like delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart and so when we read that verse we know that you know the first part of that is delight yourself in the Lord and and care about the things he cares about have a heart that is like his and when your heart is like his then your desires are going to change and and so when you want something, the Lord is going to want that for you. And he's going to want to give that to you. And then a, another verse that, that popped in there was, um, I believe it's in the first chapter of James. And um, he, he talks about you, you, you ask for these things, but you don't get them because you have the wrong motives. That's right. Yeah. So our motives and our heart condition, 
seem to be very important in um, receiving this promise. Would you not agree? 100% accurate. That's the beauty of the scripture. That's that's what you really understand. That's why you need to know the word. Because it's very, very clear that the name and the claim it, you know, kind of theology that says, well, you know, I just, if I want it, you know, I'm just going to pray for it. I'm going to get it because, you know, whatever I pray for, I can move mountains and all these things. But those mountains, again, are only being moved because your motives are God honoring and your objectives are God honoring. And and so that's that's what the James talks about. That's you see that throughout Scripture. The Apostle Paul talks about that. You know, again, in First Corinthians 13, indirectly, the motive has to be love. Right. And, and we're not just talking about a selfish form of love. We're talking about the pure form of love. And then you go back to First Corinthians 2, the haywood or stubble. The haywood or stubble are things that we do, those motives that aren't God honoring and aren't blessing others because of the wrong motives. And so that's the other frightening thing about this, too. Even in ministry, you know, for us, you know, folks who are in ministry, we got to we have to test our hearts, too, because we could still be doing, you know, the, 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 a good thing, the right right ends but still have the wrong motives, you know, because you see that in all the, all the time. So all that stuff gets burned up. But anyways, it's, it's, it is, the key is stay connected to the vine. And then that's, that's our insurance. That's our safeguard that keeps us on the straight and narrow. Hmm. You know, it's, it's amazing how scripture just confirms itself you know, over and over. And it, as you, you talk about one verse, other verses come to mind. And that, you, you know, what you just said, it, it just triggered um, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Yeah. And, you know, it's where he says, you know, if I could do all these great things, if I could say to that mountain move right. and all this, but I didn't have love, I, I'd be nothing. And, you know, so when you talk about the motives, even within ministry, yep. um you know, you could be doing great things for the kingdom of God, but for the wrong motives, because you're not doing it from a place of love. You're doing it from maybe pridefulness. You know, I want to I want to have the most successful ministry. But uh, I, I want it for myself and I'm, I'm not going to share that glory with other people. You know, it, it's it's me kind of thing. Yeah, Danny, all I can say is amen and preach that because that's that's one of the really most powerful spiritual warfare weapons in the church. And see, that's the other thing. You know, the thing is, you know, the gifts are given without repentance, which means, you know, God gives people gifts. So you may have the gift of healing. You may have the gift, of, again, of even with prayer. And you're moving those mountains. And again, that may benefit, you know, your flock. But see, what the Apostle Paul was talking about is us. He's talking about you as a believer. Because the only way that ultimately we can really purify the body of Christ and collectively is when we actually are testing our own spirits, right? Because ultimately, we see the problem, we get confused. The outcome is always determined by the Lord anyways. So even, you know, really, who gets the glory moving those mountains? It's not me. It's just, you know, it's it's the Lord. And I, I'm allowing the Lord's power to work through me and agreeing with him. So that's the great privilege. You, you, you get to be, you go along for the ride, so to speak. And you get credit because you, you know, the credit comes from just your will to surrender and then saying yes to God. And then you're a, you're a servant, but even the servants don't necessarily get rewarded for just doing their job. So that's, that's, that's another, that's a whole nother area. But, but anyways, for all of our audiences is that, which just simply means is that there's always new devils in every level, as Graham Cook says. And one of the new devils that come with success in ministry is just the tendency, even very subtly, to give ourselves the glory rather than the Lord. Amen. Amen.